disgruntledduck.com. Hi guys, welcome again to another Rob Scale Model Workbench. Another review video. Uh, this one's again, it's a Russian tank destroyer, SU-122. Um, again, this is a self-propelled gun, so no turret. Quite comparable with the Jagdpanzers that the Germans have. So let's have a dig in, see what we've got. Some rubber tracks, pretty much the same pattern tracks as the T-34. Um, this is going to be very similar to a T-34 in respect the wheels are going to be the same. So generally all those Russian tanks of that period with those sort of wheels. So if we dig in, again an older kit, we're looking probably 60s, 1960s, 1970s. So right, I forgot to show you the instruction manual on the uh, Jagdpanzer, so I'm going to show you it straight away on this one. Now, this is something I picked up. So on some of the, again, right, so you've got your, your Tamiya instructions, really easy. Um, these ones have got the, they don't have it at the front. Sometimes in the front section down here, they'll have a colour chart, or they'll list the colours you're going to need. It actually tells you through the instructions what we're going to need. So we've got the metallic grey, so XF56. Um, now yeah, most of this stuff seems to be XF56 until we start painting the main body of the tank, which is there. But this is the bit that I, I do like. So it basically shows you all your sprues um, and the parts, but then on the left hand side here actually lists what those parts actually are, which is, um, I actually like that. Some of the more modern kits don't have that, but that's really actually quite cool, especially there's sometimes I go through and I've missed something and I'm sitting here at the end of it and I've got a part on a sprue and I've like no idea what it is, uh, what I've missed. Because I tend to, I don't build all things always in the way the instructions show me to. I'll, uh, I have my own little, uh, own little way of doing things that doesn't always work out to the best. But at least this way I can go back, I can see what that part is and it can give me a general idea of where it should be going on the tank. So yeah, there's the instructions. We've got a couple of variations of what we can do. We have some decals here, as always. So it looks like we've got three different painting marks here, or two maybe, and this is just showing us. Yeah, this just shows that we've got two painting variants, and then we've got one just showing what the markings are. We've got the markings there, we can make a ton of different variations. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. We've got, they've actually given us on the back, they've given us a little paint chart just down here and it tells us what colours we're going to need. So that's always useful. Right, we've got, so a big old screw here. I'm going to think, because I built a, um, what did I built? I built an Abrams and I used a screw that went through the gun barrel so it could move up and down. So I'm going to assume that's for the same thing. A uh, metal pole there is generally for the drive sprocket or something. So that's that. The wheels, I'm not going to spend too much time on the wheels, although they do look quite pretty. I do have to say there's quite a lot of uh, detail on there. So that's our wheels. So it's, it's a focus in now. There's pretty standard set of wheels for the time. Um, they do look nice though. There is a little bit of casting mark, but we can get away with that. But yeah, nice clean. Perfect cast. They do, I've got to say, they must have an awesome quality control down at Tamiya because I've rarely seen, I've had over the years hundreds of Tamiya kit and I've rarely seen uh, anything that bad. What did I get? I got, I got um, what did I get the other week? It was a, I did a review of it. It was the, uh, well, it was a Revol kit, it was a submarine and a part was damaged and they put a replacement part already in the box. So their quality control caught that and then put the new one in. So yeah, the rear of this looking very much like a T34. Um, where the T34 would just be flattened straight along there and then the turret on top. But a nice cast, nice and smooth. There's not much texture on the actual uh, on the actual body of the tank, but it looks nice. All in one piece. Again, it's not a massive kit. It's about the same size as that uh, Yet Panzer, so a medium, medium size vehicle. Our next sprue. So our poly caps, which are pretty standard. These ones, okay, these are a little bit frustrating, I've just seen. 
So these these are poly caps, but they fit on the uh, they fit on as the bolts, the little nuggets on the end of the wheels. These are something that's a bit of a, an older thing from Tamiya. There is a few kits I've seen them on. The old Panther kit, the Chieftain kit has them. I think there's a couple of others. I'm not mad keen on these just because the paint doesn't take too well to them. Um, I've had a lot of problem getting paint to stick to, especially when you're handling them in the weathering process, the paint can rub off, it just doesn't doesn't bite into them. So you need a decent primer, you need to wash these guys up first. Soapy water, because there's always some residue on them that will uh, that will hinder paint adhesion to begin with. So yeah, get them washed up. Rattle cans I find um, they bite into this quite well. Uh, that's about the best thing I've found so far. I'm going to try the other primers on them, but yeah, the rattle cans at the minute seem to have enough bite on them to get onto these. So that's those. Got off a spare fuel tank. They're actually quite beat up these ones, so that's quite cool. It's nice to have something that's pre, pre weathered, should I say, uh, rather than just being so perfect and smooth. But yeah, they look nice. The rear. We've got our grills there for our engine cover. Um, again, there's probably going to be aftermarket parts you could buy. I mean, technically, they're quite clean, so we could cut these out and replace them. That actually might be a consideration to cut that out and replace that. Um, but again, that's the level of ability you have and how much you want to do. I'm building most of these at the minute, these Tamiya kits, I'm just building them straight out of the box, just because that's that's the way I like to build these. Some of the other kits, uh, some of the other kits you don't need to do as much to get the detail in. Um, some like the Hobby Boss or the Mini Art or uh, Trumpeter, they come with all the extras and that, but then you are paying a premium. Whereas you can buy this kit for less than 20 pounds. You can spend say 15 pounds, 20 pounds on aftermarket kits. Whereas if you buy say a Hobby Boss or a Mini Art or a Trumpeter or, or many other manufacturers, their kit's going to be about 40 50 quid to begin with um so it's really up to you for these you know there's different levels of modeling i like to get into i like to do some detailed builds but i just like to do some of these i find them it's supposed to be a relaxing hobby and when it starts becoming stressful because of pe and bits and pieces and trying to be too too perfect you can frustrate me so i do like these kits i can just sit down have the telly on in the background or listen to a podcast and just while away the hours. So, right, base of our self propelled gun, our tank destroyer. Our suspension is pre fitted, as you can see. Um, I'm not massively bothered again on a kit like this if that's pre done for me, I'm quite content with that. Some kits are frustrating when the uh, they won't line up, but yeah, you can see again it's one of these older kits when you used to motorize them, so you've still got the, the casting marks where you put the batteries in. But there we go on that one. Boom. Just have a sip of juice, a bit of a dry throat. Mm. So there we go. That looks nice. And on to our final couple of parts. So again, we've got our figure. We've got uh, the front, top of our vehicle, the main hatches. We've got these supports that are going to be holding our um, our oil drums. But yeah, it looks all right, doesn't it? Figure's quite detailed. There's again, always, 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 always. There's a tiny little bit of flash along the side of the figures. Always, it's amazing how so many other parts don't get it, but the figures guaranteed to get it. Um, be interesting to know why that actually happens. But there we go. There's the top and the front of our armour. Nice bit of detail, that's going to pop out, those rivets are quite deep, they're going to look really nice with a wash on them. And then the casing for the gun, another oil drum, we've got some shovels, um, we've got the handrails that are going to go down the sides, we've got a very short gun barrel, um, it's quite, it looks like quite a large gun but quite a short barrel, so that's interesting. It's definitely a unique vehicle, it's not something that you really see, uh, if you look at the front of that, it is very unique the way this gun is configured and the size of it, etc. But yeah, this should be again an interesting build. Um, 
looking forward to this one actually. It's I've, I've never seen this and I think it's going to look quite cool when it's finished. So come back and join me, we're going to be building this up. Eventually I'm actually going to uh, put some finished stuff up on the site. There's so many things that I start building and I never finish building. Um, so I need to actually get on and actually finish a few things. But anyway, thanks for joining me. Hope this has been a great video and it's been helpful to you. And uh, check out the channel, hit subscribe and join me for some more scale model content. So until next time, happy modeling and see you later. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment.